In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Etherscan. Etherscan is the Ethereum blockchain explorer. And in this video, I'll show you how to use it to look up specific addresses to see what they're holding and which transactions they've made. I'll show you how to look at specific transactions on Etherscan to look at exactly what was going on. We'll look at tokens and I'll even show you how to find the largest whales for particular tokens. And then I'll show you some other useful features of Etherscan as well. Welcome back to Dynamo DeFi. My name is Patrick. As with all of my videos, this is not financial advice. This is for educational purposes. And in this video, specifically education about how to use Etherscan to stay safe and do your own research in crypto. Now, let's get into it. Before I get started, I want to share that if you want to learn more about on-chain analysis, I recently made a free 30-page ebook. That's an introduction to on-chain analysis. It'll go through in detail how to use Etherscan more detail than I can go into in one video. It'll also go through different strategies for finding whale wallets and how to track those whale wallets as well as how to find and analyze new DEX listings. Here's what the book looks like. As you can see, it's got lots of diagrams, lots of practical instructions. If you want it, all you have to do is sign up for my weekly newsletter, which you can do at dynamodefi.com. Again, that's dynamodefi.com and you get this free ebook. All right, so let's get started. First place we're going to go is to the Etherscan homepage, and the website is simply etherscan.io. And one thing I want to note is that although this is the Ethereum blockchain explorer, the things I show you today will work on virtually any major blockchain explorer because most of them are modeled off of Etherscan or even made by the same company that makes Etherscan. And even if they're not, these same concepts such, such as addresses, transactions, tokens, etc., will still apply, and most of them will have the features that I show you today. So don't think you can only use this for Etherscan. You could do it for Binance Smart Chain, for Arbitrum, for Solana, for pretty much any blockchain that you want. Cool. So here's the homepage. We can see our search bar here. This is really your base for getting anywhere on Etherscan. You can search for addresses. You can search for transactions, for tokens, etc. We see the latest transactions and blocks. Uh, that's not particularly useful since there's many every second. Uh, you can see some basic facts such, such as the price of ETH, the total number of transactions and so on so forth. Uh, and then at the top here, you see the menu here. For example, you have some pre-made searches for pending transactions, contract internal transactions, you can see some pre-made lists of tokens, such as the top tokens and so on and so forth. We'll go through a few features up here at the end, uh, but for the most part, we're going to focus on searching things here since that's most of what you'll have to do with either scan. Awesome. Uh, to start, we're going to look at an address and I found this whale address from another list. This is 0x902, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whole string. This is how Ethereum addresses are going to look in general. It's going to start with 0x and it's going to have a string of characters. And that might look crazy, but then we search it. The address comes up and we can see here, wow, this person has over $30 million of ETH. They, and that is almost 16,000 ETH. And they actually have more because some of it is in DeFi. Some of it is held in other tokens. This definitely qualifies as a, as a whale wallet. And I don't know who this is, by the way. I know what their ENS is, but I don't know who this particular individual is. They go by CZ Samsung SB.eth. Don't know exactly who that is. Great. So here on the page, we can see a few interesting things. First, we see their ETH balance right here. Like I mentioned a second ago, they this person has almost 16,000 ETH. We see the value of that ETH which is over $30 million. And now this is just the value of that ETH. So like I said, this doesn't include their other tokens, doesn't include things that they may have staked. This is just the value of ETH in their wallet. And then we can see their token holdings here, which is over $7 million. That includes some Coinbase wrapped ETH. That includes EUSD. That includes wrapped ETH, SW ETH, USDT, anchor staked ETH, USDC. So basically this person has a whole lot of different types of ETH and stable coins. And so far, while this isn't giving us a ton of alpha about say little coins to invest in, what this does tell us that's interesting is that this person has chosen to trust Coinbase with a lot of their ETH, right? So if you were 
trying to figure out where should you stake your ETH, then Coinbase is one of the more centralized options. However, we do see that this particular person has elected to deposit much of their ETH there. Great. So this is the this is the overview, and then we can see some other information down below. For example, all of this person's transactions. And now one thing that's really important to note is that the transactions on addresses in Etherscan are actually divided into four different sections. You have transactions, internal transactions, token transfers, ERC20, and NFT transfers. Transactions is going to be pretty much vanilla transfers of ETH, and they could be transferring it anywhere. Uh, it could be to a smart contract, could be to another address, could be to an exchange, but these are vanilla transfers of ETH. Internal transactions are transactions the address is receiving that have a smart contract as an intermediary. So for example, in this transaction, 17 hours, 36 minutes ago from when I'm making this video, this person received about 1000 ETH. However, it was via a Paraswap router. So if they're swapping something else to ETH and then it comes from the Paraswap router, it's going to show up here in internal transactions. Then you have token transfers. These are transactions where they're transferring one of these tokens that is not ETH itself. This could be any token on Ethereum. Most tokens you're looking at, excluding NFTs, are going to be ERC-20s. For example, liquid staked versions of ETH such as CB ETH or, or ST ETH are going to be going to be ERC-20 stable coins like USDT are going to be ERC-20s and then all the other tokens that you know and love that exist on Ethereum you know that could be Chainlink that could be Aave that could be Uniswap token those are all going to be ERC-20 so any transfers that involve those whether they're going to a smart contract whether they're being transferred between wallets etc etc those are all going to show up here in the token transfers ERC-20 section one other quick thing I want to know about ERC 20s is that a lot of times people will spoof transactions here to make it look like someone was purchasing a transaction that they actually did not. For example, they might make a fake smart contract with the same name as Uniswap and then they use it to transfer a token in and make it look like this whale bought something when they really didn't. So you have to be really careful and you look at some of my other videos, look at my guide on on-chain analysis, I show you some other tools that you can do to dive into these in more detail. And then finally, you have the NFT transfers section. Just like this shows transfers of ERC-20s, this shows transfers of NFTs. So any NFTs that are transferred in this wallet on Ethereum, they're going to show up here. And technically, you would call these ERC-721s or ERC-1155s. And yeah, you can see here this person's less of an active NFT trader, although they do still have some NFTs. All right, now let's look at an example of a transaction. We'll use this same wallet, this CZ Samsung SB.eth, and we'll click on view all transactions because I want to find a relatively large transaction so that it's interesting. Let's see, and we see this one from four days, 16 hours ago for 2100 ETH. I would qualify that as large for sure. So let's look at exactly what was happening here. And now you can see the transaction page. Let's get a quick overview of what we're seeing here. At the top, you see the transaction hash, just like each address has a hash. So does each transaction also starts with zero X. You see the status. So this transaction was a success. Sometimes, for example, if you're looking up a transaction you made that never went through, you might see that it, that it failed or was still pending. You have the block number, so it was confirmed in this block here. I'm not going to read the whole number. And then you see the timestamp of the transaction. So this transaction happened four days, 16 hours ago on June 30th. And of course, you have the from and to addresses. This was from this address we've been looking at, the CZ Samsung SB.eth, and it was to this 0xBD7 dot 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 address. Now, one thing that's really important to note here is that this symbol, this thing that looks like a piece of paper with the corner folded over, that means that this was a smart contract. So anytime you see this symbol anywhere in Etherscan, it means that the address you're looking at is the address for a smart contract. It's not an individual's wallet, it's a smart contract. And so in this case, this individual interacted with this smart contract. 
And the result of it, if you look at ERC-20 tokens transferred, so although this was not in the ERC-20 token section, it can still involve ERC-20 tokens, is basically if you unpack each of these addresses individually, what you find is that what this person is doing is they are withdrawing Spark ETH from Spark protocol. And so what they they withdraw and then the value of this is 2100 ETH. That's how much ETH they had staked in this protocol, about $4 million. And then down here, you can also see the transaction fee and the gas price. Next up, we'll use Etherscan to look up specific tokens. Etherscan also has a wealth of information about basic tokenomics, as well as other things such as the largest whales for a specific token. We go back to the Etherscan homepage, and then you can type in a token name or address here. In this case, we'll look at Render, which is a decentralized GPU network. And first thing to note is that there are several Render tokens here. Now, you want to make sure you have the right one because the other ones are almost certainly scams. One way to do this is typically Etherscan will only have the logo for the correct one. And then we see these other ones have zero dollars anyways, which is wrong. However, to be safe, I always recommend going to CoinGecko. You can search the token on here. In this case, we see Render. And then we see this little field over here on the right. That's the Ethereum contract. We can copy this. And then if we bring this over here, we can make sure that we find the right token. So it brings us to this page here. Then we click on the token name here in the middle. And this way, we know that we have the right token, right? Just to be safe, since you definitely don't want to get scammed into buying a fake token. Another important thing is when you look at the top information here, you can do a basic gut check of if it makes sense. So for example, we have the overview and we have the market information here. If you saw that the fully diluted market cap of this token was very low, say $10,000, like a scam token might be, and then you would say, okay, that doesn't make sense because I know this token I'm looking at has a market cap in the billions of dollars. Some other information at the top here that's useful in general, both for identifying scams and to know is you have the max total supply, you have the number of holders, and you have the total transfers. Now, number of holders is especially important because more holders is generally a good thing. It means more people invested in the token or otherwise using the token. And if the number of holders is increasing, it means that the tokens community or user base is increasing. It also, while not perfect, can also give you some hint of how decentralized the token is. Scrolling down here, we see a few useful tabs. First is the list of transfers. Now this is going to include any transfer for this token. So there are of course many. However, if you wanted to filter, for example, solely to large transfers, you could click on that advanced filter button and filter by amount. Alternatively, what you could do is you could go to the holders section. This is what I often like to do. And this is going to show you the top 1000 holders for render token out of over 37,000 holders. Now, as with the other page we looked at, it's important to note that some of these are going to be smart contracts. Anything with this logo of a piece of paper with the corner folded, that's a smart contract. So while that might be somewhat useful, for example, if it was deposited into a liquidity pool or for some tokens, a staking contract, it's not really going to tell us, for example, that this address is a whale that's worth watching, right? Because this is not an individual, it's not a whale, it's a smart contract. Likewise, you'll notice that some of these addresses are pre-labeled as exchanges. You have the second largest address with almost 6% of the supply is labeled as Binance 8. Again, that's not particularly useful because uh, that is Binance. That's not an individual who's actively buying and selling this token. It has to do with how many people are depositing or withdrawing on the platform. You see, for example, KuCoin down here as well. And the first address that looks somewhat interesting here is this number seven address that's 0xf265 dot dot dot. Now, I don't know who this is. Maybe this is a member of the team. Maybe this is a, an early investor, it could be a fund. Uh, maybe this is just someone who really liked the token and dumped a lot of money into it early on. But this is an example of one that you might track to see if they were buying or selling. And if we click on it, It'll bring us to this page that shows all of the 
transactions related to render that this token holder has made. And we can see that they actually have not made any in quite some time for the better part of a year. And that was just with withdrawals from a few exchanges. So since this has so many exchange addresses, I do wonder if maybe this is an unlabeled exchange address. It would require more investigation. But that's basically the method for how you start to find whales here, right? You look at these large addresses and then you go through until you find one that seems to be a real person. And then you either track them to find out whether they're buying or selling that token, or you look at what else is in their portfolio that they're currently accumulating. Another interesting aspect of this token page is that you can go to the contract over here and you can see the source code for that token. So if you're more technical or you want to use some sort of AI based tool, to investigate this code. Uh, I actually have a video coming on how to do that specifically. You can do that over here in the contract section. All right, so now let's look at some other features of Etherscan that are also useful, but are maybe a little bit less known or less core to the platform. First one that I like to do is there's this charts and stats section over here under resources. And this is really good for getting overall metrics of how the Ethereum network is performing. For example, you can go to the daily transactions chart here and see the total number of transactions on Ethereum over time. And here, for example, if we zoom in by holding, we can see that they've been pretty steady this year so far. However, they are, of course, down significantly from where they are, where they were in 2021. Going back to charts and stats, we can see that there's many other things that you can do to investigate the health of the network overall. Another one that can be useful is the daily active Ethereum addresses. This tells us not necessarily how many unique people are using Ethereum because there could be smart contracts, there could be bots, etc. But it does give us a sense for what network usage is like. And we can see actually there's a surprisingly, I would say surprisingly low number of active addresses. On any given day, there's around 400,000. And that's been pretty steady for most of this year. Another really useful page that you can find on Ethereum is over here in the find on Etherscan is over here in the more section. There is this tool called Gas Tracker. And by the way, there's a lot of useful tools in this section, but if we go to Gas Tracker, this shows you the current price of gas on Ethereum, low, average, and high. And then it tells you the estimated cost of various transactions right now. And so for example, we can see that OpenSea is around $7.23, whereas a Uniswap V3 swap would be $18.62 right now. So this is really useful if you wanna get a sense of what things are gonna cost before you go ahead and make the transaction. And that's your introduction to Etherscan. There's a whole lot more you can do with this tool, but this should set you on the right path to begin learning on your own. If you want to learn more, be sure to check out my free ebook on on-chain analysis. Link in the description to download that, dynamodefi.com. And if you want more videos like this, be sure to like and subscribe. Until next time, this is Dynamo DeFi.